Hey friends, this is Ayama, the owner of Omnia, a small jewellery business based in Sydney, Australia. Today I'm going to be sharing why and how I started my jewellery business in the middle of a global pandemic. I launched my business in September last year and this is currently my seventh month of business. I wanted to start a YouTube channel to document my journey um, through entrepreneurship um, and just my business journey of my goal trying to hit six figures. I think for everything to make sense I'll have to start from the beginning and explain a little bit of my background and what led me to start my business. So if you're not really interested in the why part then I'll leave some timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the how. So how this all started. Growing up I have always been creative. I grew up drawing and painting um, but I also think from a young age I was maybe just meant to be an entrepreneur or meant to be in a business kind of thing. I always was a bit of a hustler I guess. I knew I wanted a career in the creative field but I wasn't sure what. Um, I decided to apply for graphic design when I finished high school and did that for about a semester um, when I realized it was not for me. It was. It's funny because I remember the day that I was sitting in one of my coding classes and I was just like, I can't do this anymore. So I legit walked out of my class, called my best friend and said, I'm dropping out of here. It's kind of funny now because, oh, well, not a lot of what I do, but I personally um, find it helpful to know basic coding when you do have your own online store. Um, you could always outsource this, but I think it does help when you have a little bit of knowledge. Um, so I guess my semester of graphic design definitely helped. Fast forward a year, I still didn't know what I wanted to pursue. I didn't know what job to get. I didn't know what to study, but I felt like a part of me was letting my parents down by not going to uni and by no means were they um, pushy or expected me to go to uni but I think it was more of like society's expectations that um, really put the pressure um, or I guess I put that pressure on myself and so I decided to enroll uh, in a business business management degree because I thought it would be broad enough for me to eventually um, have different option, uh, career options. I think I was about two years in when I still really didn't know what I wanted to do. However, I became um, a lot more interested in makeup. So I decided to enroll in a makeup artistry course and um, finish my bachelor's degree early and um, got a associate's degree instead in business management. I was very fortunate that my parents were um, very supportive with my choices and even my parents were like, you definitely should be doing something creative. So they were all for me studying um, makeup. So I was very, very lucky in that sense. So once I finished that makeup course in, I think it was 2015, um, I started taking clients. I was currently working in retail and I decided to work um, a 9 to 5 Monday to Friday that way I could keep Saturdays and Sundays free to take makeup clients. So after maybe two year, two or three years doing that, um, I got a new job, um, which I'm currently still doing part time now. And Luckily for me, they are very flexible. So eventually I started working four days a week instead of five. That way I could take on more clients. I guess the end goal for me was to do that full time and be in the uh, beauty industry. However, I think there was always a part of me that felt like it wasn't enough. Then I decided to do a course in eyelash extensions. I thought, oh, I'll add another service to my business. Um, this will help with um, building up more clientele if I have more services to offer. And then I decided to do a hair course so I could add hairstyling as part of my services as well. Thinking the same thing, oh, if I add more services, maybe I'll get more clients and more work and then it'll be busy enough for me to quit my nine to five eventually. And looking back, I realized that even though I was investing myself and I don't regret doing any of these courses, I was not fulfilled in that field anymore. 
don't regret it because I think it's all part of my journey and I probably wouldn't be here if I hadn't done all of that. Yeah, I think deep down for a couple of years I knew that I didn't want to pursue um, a career in the beauty industry long term anymore. Anyway, so I continued taking clients until COVID hit. Um, I think once COVID hit and I was forced to stop taking clients, um, it really solidified my, um, I think I just knew in my heart that I was done doing that. I saw all my, um, you know, my other makeup artist friends, um, being absolutely devastated because you know, that was their line of work and they couldn't do it. It was a, a, a time of uncertainty. We didn't know when we'll be able to take clients again. And then there was me who was kind of relieved. I was like, oh, I actually get to have a break. And that's when I knew I shouldn't be doing it anymore because I just wasn't passionate about it, which was a really difficult thing because I thought I was like a failure and that I was giving up on my makeup career um, or career in the beauty industry when that's not the case at all. Um, we're always constantly changing um, and evolving and so I guess that was just the chapter of my life that was finishing at the time. COVID was a really confusing and difficult time for a lot of people. For me it was um, a bit of a blessing in disguise, I feel, because it gave me the opportunity to start fresh and really pursue what I had been thinking of doing for a long time. So one day I decided to just announce on my Instagram that I would no longer be taking um, makeup appointments anymore and that I would be pursuing a new business venture. So this is when we get into, I guess, the how of how I started this business. I knew I wanted to start an online business, but I didn't know what basically. And there were so many different options. Like I know a lot of people were getting into drop shipping to Amazon, FBA, um, or just starting a brand. Um, so I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do or what I wanted to sell. Thinking, okay, let's just think of things that inspire me and then hopefully something will come from that. So the first thing I thought of was my mom. My mom is probably my biggest inspiration. She is the hardest worker I know. And um, one of, I guess, the fondest memories I have of my mom and I is like when she would get home from work back when I lived at home, um, even from a young age, I would just like go into my mom's room and spend time with her when she, you know, um, come home from work and was getting changed and like raid her wardrobe um, and her jewelry collection. But I always loved her gold jewelry. I don't know why. I think because most of my friends wore silver like in high school, but I've always been more of a golden girl. So she was kind enough to gift me a few of her, or I guess hand down a few of her pieces. Um, that I guess sparked the idea for me to sell gold jewelry. Um, I thought to myself, there is a bit of a gap in the market because myself, I definitely couldn't afford solid gold jewelry. Um, the only solid gold jewelry I own is from my mom, um, which is actually this necklace that I'm wearing and her. Um, wedding rings that she could no longer fit so she passed them on to me yeah so basically i thought there's a gap in the market there are a few mainstream jewelry um brands in australia that are available on the affordable side i would find that i could never really find jewelry that suited my style personally that um was affordable but also lasted um longer than like a week without turning black so I decided to go from there. Now that I knew what I wanted to sell, I needed to think of a brand name. I think this is a really important part of your business. I was brainstorming names. I always wanted it to be unique because my name is unique, um, but I didn't want to name it after myself, even though my mom to this day still is like, you should have named your brand name after you, but I didn't want to do that. 
So I was searching on good old Google for um, unique baby girl names um, and was trying to find something that aligned with the brand of, um, you know, like gold jewellery. So I, I think I looked up um, girl names that mean gold or girl names that mean um, treasure. So I came across the name Omnia. Don't take my word for it because I don't know how accurate this is, you know, you can't trust everything on the internet, but I saw that Omnia was, um, Omnia meant golden lady. So I thought that was perfect for the brand. One, because my target market was um, obviously women. I wanted to make jewelry for women and I also knew that my brand values were always going to be revolving around empowering women and making them feel confident. I thought this name is perfect because it sort of embodies all of that while also um, aligning with the whole golden theme. The next step of that was once I decided on the brand name, I had to double check and make sure it was available on um, as all my social media handles and a domain. So your domain is like your website name. Next was finding my products. So obviously I had a budget for this um, business and even though I really wanted to be able to design all of the jewelry myself, the um, minimum order quantity for custom design jewelry was really high and I just couldn't afford it. So I thought for my first collection, I will look for wholesale designs that um, I, I personally loved and also felt like there was not, um, it wasn't oversaturated in the market because obviously there are other jewelry brands. I started with five different products uh, for my first collection, ordered samples of those, um, tested them out, also did lots of research about jewelry. It's important if you're starting a business you need to know what you're talking about when you're selling it. So you can't just um, expect to put something on your website and not be able to tell your customer uh, what is it made out of, what are the benefits of this product um, and the materials. Um, so yeah, I had to do a lot of research about um, jewellery, the different materials, um, types of gold plating. Um, I tested out my samples to make sure that they lasted well. After I tested them, I placed my bulk order, um, which is really scary because it's a lot of money to invest in. Um, and I also designed the jewelry boxes that um, my jewelry was going to be packaged in when sending it to the customer. That was probably the biggest expense because I couldn't find a manufacturer that had a low minimum order quantity, so I had to order 500 jewelry boxes um, and that was very scary because I didn't even think I was going to make one sale let alone 500. While I was waiting for my packaging and my um, stock to be shipped, I started designing my website through Shopify. So Shopify is the website platform that I use, which I think is great. I highly recommend to anyone that's starting an online business to use Shopify. So while I set up, I guess, the skeleton of my website, I was also coming up with a timeline for my launch. So I gave myself a deadline that way. I wasn't procrastinating. Basically how I did it was, I wrote every single step of what I needed to do before I launched and I estimated how long this was gonna take, added that up, and then came to an estimate um, date of launch. And so, and along the way you'll think of things like, oh, I'm gonna have to do this to do this. So um, eventually you will be able to input all of that into your um, timeline. And I would say work backwards. So maybe give yourself an estimate date and then say, okay, I've gotta wait a month for the products to ship, uh, I've got to wait another month or so to do the photo the photo shoot, have those edited, um, make sure the website's perfect, and then, yeah, work yourself backwards from there. And if you're cutting it too close, then maybe you're going to have to extend your um, or move your launch date. That way you're not rushing. I created a business plan 
I will have a separate video on this. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. Even before all of this, you should have a business plan. Do your market research, know who your target audience is. All of this, um, this is when everyone started getting TikTok. And at first I didn't even know what it was. I thought it was like a kid's app and just with like dumb videos. But I actually, when I was doing research about um, starting a business, I did a lot of my research on YouTube, but then I also found a lot of helpful videos on TikTok, which um, surprised me. And so I thought, because I saw so many American businesses doing it, I didn't really see many Aussie businesses other than I think my glow to at the time and M Lucen from Napoleon Swimwear. So I was like, I'm going to start documenting my journey and posting tips as I learn because I think it's helpful and I would love to help other people um, who are starting their business to make it easier for them. So I didn't think much of it. I was just continuing to post TikToks to, I guess, one, yes, try and build up my followers. That way, when I launched, I did have some traffic going to my website. But also, I don't, I don't. That you, um, you had, you. Honestly, didn't think I would grow to that many followers. So, um, as of today, I think I have 39,000 TikTok followers, which I know followers are not everything, but just the thought of 39,000 people choosing to follow me is like insane um which is probably why i hesitated in starting a youtube channel for so long is because i thought one what could i possibly like who is possibly going to be interested in me and what i have to say but um since i have started my tiktok journey i guess you could call it um I've learned a lot about just sharing valuable information that you think could help others. Um, and also, even though you might not think you're interesting or you might not think you have anything, I guess, valuable to share, there are people that are watching you and are inspired by you. Like the amount of messages that I have gotten from people saying how much I've helped them just by showing them um, and being real about my journey, like it hasn't been easy and there was like for a long period during the start of launching my business, um, you know, I had days without sales, I probably had weeks without sales and so it was disheartening but I, um, I guess now that I'm in a place where I'm comfortable in saying that it's possible like when you put in the hard work and you're being transparent with people then they will see that um, and I guess that's my theory and why people are following me on TikTok anyway and so I wanted to use YouTube as I guess another platform I get to post more in-depth videos because obviously the maximum you can post on one video on TikTok is one minute so I felt like I couldn't give as much um, information or show um, as much of me as I could um, on TikTok but I still will be posting on there obviously Back to, um, I guess, my my, my pre-launch. Um, while I was waiting for my stock, my packaging, and I guess planning everything, um, and just planning how to get the word out there about my business. Because um, when I was um, doing makeup, obviously I had my Instagram and it pretty much was mainly people following me for makeup content or following me because they had um, booked me for makeup before. And even though I announced that I wasn't doing makeup anymore and that I was um, going to be starting a new business, I was really scared about telling people. I think I had probably only told a handful of people, uh, obviously my partner, my closest friends, and um, only a few family members just because it's like really nerve-wracking because you don't see a lot of people or personally I don't know anyone else that has started an online business personally only I guess like mutual friends yeah I think it's normal to have that fear of judgment a fear of failure but you just gotta do it I know it sounds so cliche but it's like you really don't know unless you try you know I get questions so much like oh I really want to start a business but I don't want to like 
waste all this money because I don't know if it's going to succeed. That is the problem from the get-go. If you have that mindset of it's going to fail, it's most likely going to fail. If you have a positive outlook, for me, this was my outlook anyway. Yes, I'm spending, I think I had a budget of $5,000. You know, $5,000 is a lot of money, but I was like, I'm willing to risk it for my future, if that makes sense. Like, I'm doing this because one, I, I want to be my own boss. I don't want to have to rely on a nine to five forever. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with a nine to five, just putting it out there. But me personally, I didn't see myself working for someone else for the rest of my life. And so I thought this $5,000 is a lot of money, but it's a small price to pay for financial freedom in the future because I knew I was going to put the work in to make it happen. And yes, I still had my doubts. I still had that fear of failure, but I knew if I didn't have a positive mindset about it, then it wasn't going to succeed. But in saying that, there are still times where I still doubt myself. That's completely normal. I'm a human being. Again, it's just, I guess, acknowledging those fears and just using it as a motivation to push you rather than as an excuse of not doing it um, or not going for it. Months later, I had done my photo shoot. I had ordered all of my packaging and pretty much had everything ready had sent out my PR packages to the influencers that I was working with and organized them to post around the date that we were launching. Also, another thing that you want to do is build up your email list. So even prior to launching, have a landing page set up so that you can capture emails. You want to provide an incentive for people because otherwise they're not going to want to sign up. So I um, offered a 10% off discount for your first order if you signed up to our email list which I call our VIP list and I think that really helped build up I guess the anticipation for the launch um, if you're not hyping up your launch then one no one's going to know that you're launching so they won't purchase on your launch day and two this also helps with future sales like ongoing it shows that people actually have an interest in your brand so why would why wouldn't you want to target them rather than just relying on new customers to buy from you. I set my launch date, which was the 9th of September, and I just remember waking up and being so nervous. I felt like I was hyperventilating the whole day. Like I was so excited, but so nervous at the same time. I believe we launched at 7 p.m., but my email subscribers had early access at 6 p.m. So that's also another perk that you could advertise for people to, as an incentive to sign up to your email list. Yeah, so the launch went really well. I didn't know what to expect because it was my first launch. I honestly would have been happy with like five orders. My goal was to make enough money to cover what I had spent, um, not in my launch date, but like just in general, like I think in the first month, I think that was my goal. Just make enough money to cover how much I spent, which was about $5,000. Yeah, so we launched and I think I got about, I'm pretty sure I got 27 orders in that first line, which I thought was amazing. A few of those orders were actually international orders, which also was like, I couldn't believe, but I think that is thanks to TikTok because I don't think I would have been able to reach an international audience without TikTok, to be honest. First month in business went really well. I made about $7,000 in sales in my first month. I obviously made, made my goal, which was to make back enough to cover the cost of starting my business. So that was September, October, November, and December. I did not do that well and I can put it down to a few things. Because I was working a 9 to 5 as well, during that time of the year it was really busy. I was really overwhelmed with trying to balance running my business and work. I, honestly, I was just drained after my 9 to 5 and so I didn't put in as much effort as I should have into my business and it definitely reflected on my sales you know i was really bummed out about it i was disappointed in myself because i knew when starting this i wanted to put a hundred percent into it so i was like you're either putting in a hundred percent or you're not it's not going to get anywhere if you don't towards the end of the year and to the start of 2021 i was like okay i'm going all in it doesn't matter if i'm still working at nine to five i still need to put everything 
I can whatever spare time I have into the business and it definitely paid off. January is usually a slower month because it's just after the holidays and so everyone's broke after Christmas shopping. So I was not expecting a lot, but my sales picked up. I think I made six thousand dollars in January. So October I made three thousand three hundred dollars in sales. So a massive drop, fifty-five percent decrease in sales since my launch month of September. November I made about four thousand dollars, which, I, as I said you would think would be one of the busier months because of Black Friday sales and um, the lead up to Christmas. December, 3,900, so not even $4,000. And that's when I decided to go all in, did everything I can to stay consistent with social media and just working on the business. So whether that was just taking different types of content photos um, posting on my Instagram stories more, staying consistent with TikTok and that definitely paid off because in January I made $7,000. So yeah, $7,000 is a big jump considering that it's usually a quiet a month for a lot of businesses. So it was definitely, I guess, a boost and like a push for me to be like, okay, if you're putting in the work, it pays off. You need to continue doing this and continue analyzing what you did the previous month and seeing what you did wrong and then now that I did something or a few different things to drive sales, I need to replicate that the next month. That way we can continue making consistent sales. And then February, which was a shorter month, I did a little bit less, but still pretty good considering it was a shorter month, which was $6,400. And March, which is last month, was my best month since launching. For some reason just knew in my heart that I was like, I'm going to reach my goal. Like I'm actually going to reach my sales goal for once for the month. I'll share a clip of, I decided to document because I had $100 left before the month ended to reach my goal and it was about 10 o'clock at night. So two hours to go before the night ended and I decided to send out a marketing email just to give my VIP customers a exclusive discount. It's just so one person could order something that way I could make it over to my goal of $8,000 for the month. Little did I know, I don't know if it was a mixture of um, uh, sending out that marketing email and also I had a TikTok video that did pretty well that I've recently posted but I had like 13 orders in one night which is like crazy because normally my average is about three a day. I ended up having a great start to the month of April as well. But yeah, so March the total was $8,245. When you're $100 from your monthly goal and you're just watching your Shopify dashboard, waiting for someone to check out, I did it. Today is the 12th of April, so it's only, I guess, just under halfway through the month and my goal this month is $9,000, so $1,000 more than last month and we've already made $5,200, so I definitely think we can reach our $9,000 goal. That is pretty much my business journey so far. I just wanted to start off this channel by sharing my journey because never did I think that when starting this I would have come so far that I would be aiming to make $100,000 in my first year of business. But analyzing my growth ever since I have started putting in 100% into my business and breaking down my my monthly goals to be able to reach that six-figure mark, I 
definitely think it's possible and so I wanted to show other people and share I guess the real highs and lows of business. I usually post like a day in my life as a small business owner on TikTok and so I want to do a bit more I guess in depth vlogs of what I do in a day. I'm going to do a video on my pre-launch strategy, what I did, how I break down my sales goals and what I intend to do to reach my six-figure goal this year. If you are interested in learning more about business, if you're thinking about starting a business or maybe you're just interested in watching my journey, then please um, subscribe and also make sure to check me out on TikTok and Instagram as well because I will have some different content on there too. And yeah, thanks for watching.